There we go. Good morning, Hawks. Hey, we have the pleasure of having some good friends from Daybreak Church uh, come down. They're from Carlsbad, but we actually have some alumni. So Kua is an alum, and we also have Monique Harris, alum. And today's, today's uh, chapel speaker is also an alumni. So got a little theme with alumni um, just coming back to, to bring you guys into worship. Uh, preach a word. So, hey, if I could just have your attention before we go into worship, I want to share. I want to share some from, something from the word. This is in Genesis, the beginning, and this is Genesis one. In the beginning, God created the heavens. He created the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now the scriptures go on to explain how God then took that nothing and that darkness and created what we see today, the oceans, the stars, us, human beings. And uh, what I want to encourage you guys as, as we go into this time of worship, we all have that emptiness in us. We all have failures, we have darkness. There's moments in our life where we're going through some really dark times. And just like we see the Lord hovering over the earth when there was nothing and then creating something so beautiful, I believe he, he wants to do that today. For my life, I, full transparency, I'm in a dark season, period. And so what I wanna encourage you and for myself as well as we go into this time of worship, allow the spirit of the Lord to come over your life, over your situation, and just breathe life into it. It's gonna cause you to uh, surrender, maybe your will, and accept his will. So if you guys could just close your eyes, and again, you know I love doing this, if you feel comfortable, and we're just gonna put our hands out right in front of us, both our hands, turning them over, opening our hands, and releasing our plans. So, Lord, as we come in here in March, man, there's a lot going on internally, mentally, around us in this world. Lord, I pray in this time of worship, in the time of the word, you would speak life into those broken areas of our life. May you bring about new things. May you create new things in our life that are dead, or dark we speak against the enemy in the name of Jesus the enemy has no power over our mentals our depression the angst that we feel for the future Lord wait may we dedicate this moment take a pause in our day to really allow you to create something new in our lives may we go out may we live in that newness and may we, uh, we live from your strength, not ours. We love you. May we feel your presence. You are here in this building. May we worship you because you are worthy. Praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Friends, it's so good to be with you all this morning. I just want us to be able to, as we press in, can we just take a moment that this is an opportunity for us to encounter his presence, to encounter his spirit right here, right now. And so we just press in where we love him. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come and move over us. We sing, come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come and move over us. Oh, we knew you, Lord. Come rest on us. We sing this together. We sing, come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I know you will fill your people with your spirit. 
Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for who you've been in our lives. Thank you for what you're gonna do. You're so good.
last verse up. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Almighty river, come and fill us again. Yes, come and fill us again.
alone. This is a prayer of our hearts. We sing together. I open up my heart to you. All that I have is yours. I open up my heart to you. Sometimes when we sing worship songs, we can kind of just say the words and we can miss the moment of what God is trying to do. And this is one of those songs where if we just sing these words, it just passes us by. And I, I went to San Diego Christian College. I actually became a Christian at this school. Well, not this school, one of the other campuses, but I, um, I had an encounter with God that changed my life forever. And this song is talking about when heaven meets our lives, nothing is the same. In Matthew 6.10, it tells us that our prayer and our heart should be that we see here on earth as it is in heaven. You see, it's not too late to experience heaven on earth, or should I say it's not too early to experience heaven on earth. And so we're gonna press in for about 60 more seconds, and here's my call. If you're in this space and you're battling something, just try giving it to God. If you're in this space and you're questioning something, just try giving it to God. If you're in this space and you're frustrated, you're upset, whatever it is, whatever you walked in with, you have to be here so you might as well not waste your time and actually give God a chance to meet you. So as we start to sing this out again, start to have an opportunity to bring heaven to earth, to bring God into your situation, to bring Jesus into the moment that you're in right now. Raise your hands in this moment. Sing this out as a declaration that we will see heaven here on earth in our time. Let's sing this out together. Come on, y'all. This is your moment. This is your time.
Father God, that's our prayer. That as we're here in chapel for the rest of this morning, God, that you would speak to our hearts, to our minds, that we would experience you in a real and tangible way that changes things. God, help us to know you more and love you better because we were here together. Help this not to be another moment where we just go through the motions, but God, where we actually give you a chance to change our lives. You're living, you're real, and you're active. Father God, speak to us this morning. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Y'all can go ahead and take a seat. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you before, my name is Chandler. I uh, am a proud alum of San Diego Christian College and am currently actually a graduate student here at SDC. So this is, I'm just one of you. It's just us. We're rocking here. Go Hawks, baby. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I played a little soccer in my time. And I say a little because I had a four-year career of 90 minutes. Um, And uh, it was my coach's fault, though. Anyone else here, your coach just doesn't play you because he doesn't know what's up? Uh, yeah, that was my coach. He didn't know what he was doing, but it's fine. I forgave him. I haven't. I haven't moved on, but I love my time at San Diego Christian College. Like I said, I met God here at this school. I came to San Diego Christian College with an understanding of what Christianity was, but with no active relationship with God. My life was forever transformed and changed by the community, the professors, the staff of San Diego Christian College. I love this school so very much, so, so very much. I know that half of you in this room are like, that's nice. I don't. I know. I know. We've all been there. But uh, this morning, I wanted to start by first talking about one of my best friends. Anyone got a best friend? Like, y'all just like, yeah, I got a ride or die. I got one. That's cool. You guys should work on making friends or just like fix your face and quit being so upset. Like, cut out your bad attitude. You have to be here anyways. Might as well not waste your time. But um, my boy, Mike, how many of y'all love Big Poppy, Mike Angulo? That's my dog. He was the best man in my wedding. I was the best man in his wedding. And uh, Mike and I, we've been through a lot of things. We've been through a lot of situations. We've, uh, we've gotten each other in trouble. We've gotten each other out of trouble. But there's one thing that Mike has done for me that I've never done for him. And that one thing that Mike has done for me is Mike tried to kill me. Yeah. Mike literally tried to kill me one time because he's that terrible of a friend. I hate Michael so much. Um, actually, I'm here to tell you that my relationship with Michael is officially over as of today because of this moment. I'm reliving my trauma. But Michael, one time, uh, I was visiting San Diego as I was about to move back. I was living in Washington for three years. Terrible mistake. Don't leave San Diego. And uh, as I was up there, I got an opportunity to come back down here, work at a church called Daybreak Church that I love so much. Um, I'm the young adult pastor there. I work with college students full time. You guys can come hang out with us the first Thursday of every month. Um, It's a good excuse to drive to Carlsbad. It's way better than Lemon Grove, let me tell you that right now. Um, But I love, love, loved Michael until this moment when I was visiting him, and it was December of 2019. And there was a big swell that came in. And I really really think surfing's cool. I don't think it's for me, but I think it's cool. I don't got arms long enough for it. And Michael was like, hey, like, and actually he was like, oh, big poppy. Let's go surf. And I'm like, do you can just talk normal? But um, I was like, yeah, man, like we could totally go. He's like, I got an extra wave storm. I got a wetsuit. Like we're chilling. And I was like, sick, bro. Let's go down here. We went down to Drug Beach. I mean, OB. And we're there. And um, the waves are just massive. Like some of y'all talk about like riding massive waves just because you're trying to get a girlfriend. It's not going to work. You got no game, no riz. But the waves were actually big. And they were crashing over the pier to the point the pier was closed. They were literally over top the pier. And I remember pulling into the parking lot. And I had this moment where fear met me and I had a decision. I could either change my plans or I could stay the course and brave what was ahead of me. Any of y'all been there? Can you remember the last time fear overwhelmed you to the point that you actually changed your plans? See, this is a moment where I should have let fear speak to me because it was a healthy fear. It wasn't an unhealthy one. And... Uh, you see, what had happened was, is we got out the car, we put the wetsuits on, which like is probably the most sus thing that you can do is like putting on and taking off a wetsuit in public. Just like, I, I don't agree with it. But anyways, we get out there and the waves are big and I'm not no punk. So I said, yeah, I'm going to get in the water and I'm going to surf. And Mike's like, all right, so here's what we're going to do, Poppy. We're going to get in and we're going to go right alongside the pier and there's this little rip current and it's just going to take us out and the waves are going to be like, we're going to slap the lip. And I was like, all right, bro. And he's like, you just got to stay right next to the pier 
First of all, he's an idiot. That's a dumb idea. And uh, what happened was I actually don't have to tell you about this because the news was there and they caught it on the news and Michael recorded it and is going to put it on the screen for y'all. So you can uh, go ahead and check this out. Here in San Diego in Ocean Beach, lifeguards warning surfers of strong rip currents. If you want to surf today, we recommend you go in front of our main lifeguard tower to your north. The Ocean Beach Pier is closed right now because of a high surf advisory, but a lot of people seem to be ignoring these dangerous conditions. NBC 7's Artie Ojeda is in OB. Meteorologist Dagmar Midcap is tracking the conditions. We're going to get started with Artie and a really beautiful afternoon out there behind you, Artie. Yeah, it's turned into a really nice evening. Right now, the waves aren't that high because the tide is out. But let me show you something. Earlier today, somebody absolutely got shredded. This is a styrofoam surfboard that got snapped in two because of the high surf. Life have certainly been busy warning people to stay out of the water because of strong rip currents, but that hasn't stopped inexperienced surfers from going out. And just a short time ago, we actually saw a surfer uh, that had to be rescued. Take a look. Once again, we do have a strong rip current next to the pier due to the large surf. It's extra strong today. A warning from San Diego lifeguards. High surf near the pier, picturesque but dangerous. We were there when one admittedly inexperienced surfer got caught up in a rip current and had to be rescued. Got stuck in the current. Couldn't get uh, unhooked from my board and got thrown into the pier a couple times. And, you know, I'm, I'm tough, so it didn't really phase me that much. But decided to give the lifeguards something to do and let them have the opportunity to save me. And they did a great job. He can laugh about it. Yep, I ain't no punk. I got that dog in me, so I went for it. Obviously, it didn't work out well. Michael and I have never been the same again. He just doesn't know that I'm going to actually teach his son how to swim. So, not my fault. It's your fault, Mike. But sometimes fear is good. Right? I should have listened to that fear. I should have sat back in that parking lot and been like, man, this is really stupid. I should not go get in this water but I didn't listen to it. But I wanna be honest with you, more times than not, when I look at our generation, when I look at what's happening in our world, fear is ruining our lives. You see, fear is a gateway. Fear leads to anxiety, and anxiety leads to us trying to control more, and trying to control more weakens our faith in God. A lot of us don't have a faith issue, we have a fear issue. You see, because when you're controlled by fear, you take control over everything. And when you take control over everything, you don't leave room for the divine, all-creator God to lead your life. And we're ignorant enough to believe that in our 18 to 22 years worth of wisdom, we know all. We show up and we say, I'm 20 years old, I am smarter than every theologian that has ever existed, and I am the one who is right about what the Bible has to say, not them. Dumb. We're ignorant, we're prideful, and we're full of fear. You see, some of the most prideful and ignorant people are people who are just controlled by fear. We don't have a faith issue in our culture, we have a fear issue. Matthew 6, 33 and 34 speaks to this. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all those things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This morning, I encourage you to take notes, not because I think I'm amazing, but I think that God will actually speak to you and you will forget it if you do not write it down. That's just how it works. The title of our conversation this morning is In My Future As It Is In Heaven in my future as it is in heaven. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this morning. I pray that you would just speak to us and that we would experience you in a powerful and tangible way. It's in your son's name we pray, amen. In the Old Testament, there was a man that would tell people about God. His name was Isaiah, Isaiah. So he was a prophet to God's chosen people in Israel. He challenged Israel because they allowed Babylon to take the brightest and the best from their generation, from their young people, and retrain them in the ways of Babylon instead of the ways of God. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like anything currently happening in our world today? Our next generation is being detrained in the way of God and retrained in the way of this world. And Isaiah stepped in and he said, hey, this is a pute, pic, I have a picture of heaven from God. However, the present has to change. Because if you want to experience the promises of God, 
In your life today, you have to allow God to dictate how you live today. So many of us are living for heaven with no concept of what heaven on earth can mean in our lives. And Isaiah spoke to Israel about that. And this morning, I want to talk to you about two ways Isaiah taught me to seek God well in my life. First one is this. Write this down. Peace is built on faith-filled obedience. The primary work of this world is to steal your peace and to give you fear instead by changing who you obey. You see, when we like peace, we forget the promises of our future. When there is no peace, there is no understanding of the promise of the future. Because when you live inside the promise of the future, your current situation and circumstance can't break you or shake you. It can bend you a little bit, but it won't break you. But when you forget the promise of the future, you also leave the peace that you can experience in your present reality. Isaiah talked about this in chapter 32, verse 17 through 20, and he said, the fruit of the righteous will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. My people will live in peace, dwelling places and secure homes in undeserved places of rest. Though hail flattens the forest and the city is leveled completely, how blessed you will be. You see, peace bleeds from an obedience to God's word and submission to his plan from your life. So many of us are struggling to experience peace. We're anxious, we're depressed, we're overwhelmed, but yet we're not obeying God and then we get mad at God for not giving us the peace that he promised, yet we're not fulfilling anything that he asked us to do. How ignorant and prideful. You see, we can't have peace in the present if we don't have obedience in our present. Faith-filled obedience will always take you farther, farther than controlling your own plans. It always will. Righteousness, living a righteous life, serves as a highway to bringing heaven here to earth. You want to start experiencing more of the promises of God in your life? Start obeying what God has called you to do in his word. You see, righteousness is a reflection of the intimacy you share with God. We don't like to talk about that. We like to talk about grace and forgiveness and all those things are great. Like, I believe in grace. Trust me. Dr. Witten knows I was the punk kid I'm talking about. I showed up at this school thinking I knew all the answers to everything. I was a prideful, ignorant, broken young man who needed God to change my life. A couple weeks ago, I had an interaction with a man that I have never experienced more of the presence of God through. I had a Harley Davidson that I deeply love, 1999 Road King classic. I would rub, rub, rub up and down the coast highway up in Carlsbad all the time until I got married. Marriage ruins your life. Write that down. And my wife said, hey, sweetheart, I love you, but that thing's got to go. I said, okay, fine. I list it. Can't sell it. Can't sell it. Can't sell it. Months and months and months go by. You want to meet the worst people on the planet? Try and sell a motorcycle third party. Nothing but scumbags trying to buy motorcycles third party. But anyways, finally one day I get a message on Facebook, super broken. The guy's like, I buy full price. And I was like, okay, cool. He shows up to where I was selling the bike to him. It's this like 70-year-old dude. Walks out. He literally looks like Mick Jagger. Just like tight, skinny leather pants, this leather jacket. He's got like a bandana over his face. He like, he like walks like he's seen some things. You know what I mean? Like the dude just walks up to me and exudes manlyhood. He's like, I don't take it for a spin. He takes it for a spin, comes back, he goes, nah, I don't take it. And I said, all right, man, sick. And he goes, I'm so excited. He said, I used to own this exact bike, but then I had to sell it to pay for my cancer treatment. He said, you see, I'm dying of cancer right now, but I want to live out my life the best I can for the rest that I have. And he saw my wedding ring, and he goes, you're married? I said, yeah. He said, I lost my wife because I was too prideful. He said, but I know Jesus. And he starts preaching to me. He doesn't even know I'm a pastor. He starts leading me to the Lord. I'm like, yes, God. <laughs> he starts preaching to me, telling me about how good God is, how much he loves God, how much he trusts God, how much God is for him. The man is dying of cancer in his 70s, and he is concerned more with my future than he is with anything else. That's called peace. In that moment, I was challenged because I don't have that level of peace. But he did because he has such a deep connection to God. Everything that exuded his mouth was speaking about how good God is, how amazing God is. He reminded me of something because 
Some of us struggle to experience the peace of God because we don't know the promises of God. We're uneducated, therefore we don't know what we get because we have a relationship with God. There are promises to, from God to you all throughout the Bible to strengthen you in Ephesians 3, to give you rest in Matthew 11, to take care of all your needs in Philippians 4, to answer your prayers in Matthew 7, to work out for your good in Romans 8, to be with you in Joshua 1, to protect you in Psalm 91, to forgive your sin in 1 John 1, that nothing can separate you from God in Romans 8, and to give you everlasting life in John 3, 16. The promises of God are real and they're for today. They're not for tomorrow. Heaven does not have to wait until tomorrow, heaven can be experienced here in this room today. You see, the best part about living with peace today is it always comes with joy. You ever meet someone who's just happy and loves their life? You see, zeal for today is found in the faith of tomorrow. Write that down. Zeal for today is found in the faith of tomorrow. If you don't know what zeal is, it's just an upgraded version of joy. It's the luxury version of joy. You see, Isaiah gave us a picture of what heaven on earth can look like. And it's noon, so that means I gotta be done, so Ben, you guys can come up. Isaiah 9, 2, and 6 through 7 says, says this. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Have you noticed that our world still hasn't recovered from what it went through in 2020? The brokenness and the chaos is not new. It was just bubbling up under the surface and then finally something caused it to explode. And now we have a world that is putting all of its fate in the Democratic Party, putting all of its fate in the Republican Party, putting its all of its fate in some kind of social movement and removing all of their faith in a God that created all of it. If you're sitting here in this room today and you're struggling with fear, this is what I have to tell you. God's promises are not for tomorrow, they're for today. And there's so much for today that regardless of your situation, regardless of your circumstance, regardless of what you're facing, you can have joy, and not just joy, but zeal for your life today. You see, I know this because in my own life last summer, I struggled deeply with anxiety and depression. It was to the points where I would call Michael every single day, overwhelmed with life, as a pastor, one time I remember sitting in the parking lot after watching a movie with my wife, having a complete and utter panic attack, sobbing uncontrollably, looking at my wife, telling her, I can't live like this. I had forgotten the promises I have in God. And so my peace left me. And not just my peace, but my zeal for life, my desire to live. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to do anything. But you see, what happened was is I had good friends around me tell me, hey Chandler, you're gonna make it through. And you're gonna make it through because God says this and God did this in my life, so he did it in my life, he can do it in yours. And then I started to press back into my Bible, I started to press back into prayer, I started to press back into worship. I got picky about what I allowed into my life. And slowly but surely, my life changed. I reconnected with God in a way I never had. My anxiety, my depression, they went away. And I now wake up every single day with a zeal for life, understanding that heaven is not for tomorrow, heaven is for today. And it lives in my obedience. When I obey God and I stay within the plan that he's lined out for my life, that's when I experience the character of God, not outside of it. So many of us think that we get to define morals, we get to define truth, we get to define what we can do and get to do and then say, okay God, now you have to give me peace outside of your plan. That's dumb, that's foolish, that's ignorant, that's prideful. But that's our world today. But you see what's starting to happen. The reason why I think we're starting to see revivals all across our world it's because we're not seeing some arrogant, egotistical kids walking around playing worship music thinking that they have the answers to everything. 
That's not how it's happening. What's happening is we're finding humble, obedient servants of God that are rooted in scripture, know who they are, obey the plans that God has laid out for them. And then through that, the presence of God is starting to flow. Through that, they're looking a lot less like culture and a lot more like Jesus. And because of that, they're the ones being used to usher in the presence of God to a hurting and hopeless world. See, the whole mission of our young adult community at Daybreak Church is to create a space for the young adults of San Diego County to experience and express the living God through their life. Because that's what's gonna change everything. A worship night is not gonna change everything. A revival is not gonna change everything. People who are obedient and living within the plan that God has laid out for them is what's gonna change everything. This, this morning, we're, we're gonna dismiss and we're gonna let y'all go if you want. But we're gonna stay in this space and, and worship. And the reason for that is God cares about your present. And you might be thinking, why would God care about my present if he's in heaven? Well, we see, God cares about what you do in your present because he already paid for your future with Jesus. Your future's already taken care of. But you see, God loves you so much that he's not gonna say, all right, you're gonna struggle, you're gonna grit, you're gonna grind, your life is gonna suck, and then when you get to heaven, everything's gonna be fine. No, God said, I love you so much that I came down to earth in the form of my son, Jesus. I lived a perfect life, I died for your sins, even though I knew you were gonna turn your back on me time and time and time again. Why? Because I wanted you to have access to me no matter what was going on. I wanted you to have access to me when your heart was getting broken. I wanted you to have access to me when you were suicidal. I wanted you to have access to me when you were overwhelmed, when you were hopeless, when you thought your life meant nothing, when you thought you were a failure. I wanted to have access to you because I wanted to tell you that I love you, I'm for you, I'm with you, and I have a plan for your life. That's the God that we speak about. That's the God that we worship. That's the God that we praise. So we're gonna go back into worship this morning and I'm gonna be up here. I wanna pray with you, I wanna partner with you. I wanna tell you that God loves you. I wanna look you in the eyes. I wanna tell you that your story is not done yet, that when you give your life to Jesus, you don't change your story, but you change who gets to write the rest of it. And when God writes the rest of your story, it always ends in victory, every single time. So this morning, if you got things to do, go do whatever you gotta do. But we're gonna press back into worship because we worship and believe in a God that is living and is real and wants to see heaven here on earth and wants to see heaven in your future. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this morning. God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and to our minds. God, I pray that as we give you more of our time and attention that we would experience more of your presence and your glory and your truth in our lives. Father God, be in the midst of what we're doing this morning. It's in your son's name we pray, amen.